okay so uh, let's start in the last class uh, we started to look at the effects of the uh, capacitors we have uh, in the transistors and in particular we uh, looked at uh, poles and zeros and try to see how we can qualitatively estimate the locations so just to brush up as i mentioned the number of poles depends on the number of independent state variables you can have in the circuit and it has no bearing to where you apply the input and actually where you measure the output from right so just to elaborate on that a little bit more so say you have uh, some network like this say it's a cascade of two rc sections so you can think of the poles as the natural response of the system in other words it kind of dictates let us say if the capacitor has some memory it says how the capacitor voltage sort of discharges over time okay similarly if you take this voltage also it will have a different profile but there will be something common between these two voltages in the way they are going to discharge and that's what uh, is uh, dictated by the poles okay so it doesn't depend on actually where you uh, apply the input or what is defined as the output as such and i'm sure you guys must have taken some control scores right so there you might have uh, seen the state space representation right x plus bu where x is basically a vector of the state variables in this case it is just the capacitor voltages right and similarly you can define a vector y which is basically the output here basically u is the input and y is the output right okay and if you find the transfer function uh, that is the relation between y and u you will find that uh, that is some b into into something I forgot what is it but the point is this guy is what will come in the denominator and will set the pole locations right i mean if you find the transfer function you will get this right and the uh, term that comes in the denominator is this fellow so and this fellow basically consists of the a matrix and a is basically the state transition matrix or in plain words it just says how the state variables change over time and in this particular case it says how the capacitor voltages vary with time and it has no relation to uh, how the input is applied and how the output is taken okay and uh, we saw that if we have a simple i should remove this guy one node with an r and a c we can actually uh, say that the pole location is minus 1 by rc but if we have a more complicated structure like this where you have uh, multiple capacitors which are connected like this it is not trivial to say okay but here also if you uh, let's say have a buffer okay now can you comment on the pole locations i call it r1c1 now can you say anything about the pole locations huh? yeah so i mean if you think about it yeah basically this section is now isolated from this section right so individually they you know that if i take the left section it had a pole of minus 1 by r1c1 the right side rc had a pole has a pole minus 1 by r2c2 and the act of putting this voltage buffer here separates these two guys so these are the poles but the moment you uh, remove this guy and make a connection like this now there is a strong coupling between these two fellows these will no longer be the pole locations okay. is it okay the point i am making is if you have isolated rc sections separated by some buffer it becomes trivial but if not we'll have to actually sit and work out okay so uh, we also then looked at the zeros and uh, the zeros as we saw depends on the location of the input 
and the output and we saw one foolproof way to detect the presence of zeros and what was that? How do I see if I have a zero or not? So you uh, find if the transfer function tends to a non-zero value for any CK tending to infinity. Okay. So you take each and every capacitor and uh, tend it to infinity and see what is the transfer function. If that turns out to be non-zero, then you have a zero. Oops. Okay. And uh, to know if you have two zeros in the network, what do we do? Simultaneously you tend two capacitors to infinity. So I will put C i C j to infinity i not equal to j. And I mean, and, and then you can actually extend it. Also, we saw uh, we also saw we can say if the circuit will have zeros if the output voltage can be represented as sum of uh, multiple voltages, each with different phases. Also, we can uh, if we have multiple paths for the current to flow from the input to output again with different phases that can also give rise to a zero right and uh, yeah so to find again uh, this is this will tell you if we have a zero or not and to find the zero location the simplest way is you know that the output is zero at the zero frequency so you simply apply kcl at at that same frequency that's all So, okay, so uh, if that is fine, uh, let us consider this guy and uh, let us say uh, I am applying the input here and say take the output here. How many poles and how many zeros do you think uh, this transfer function will have? How many poles? Two poles. How many zeros? So, if I short uh, this guy out. What happens to the output? Zero. Fine. I mean, this is zero. Obviously, this will also be zero. There is nothing uh, uh, exciting the capacitor. And similarly, if I short this, that's also zero. So, do we have a zero or not? We don't have a zero. Okay. Now, but if I uh, change the output to be this, number of poles is still the same. And now, uh, do you think we have a zero or not? Yes, right, because now again if I short this capacitor, the output is not 0. Okay. And again logically also that should make sense because uh, this voltage, do you think it is obtained as sum of two voltages? Yes, right, it is basically sum of these two voltages. Okay. So, what is the 0 location do you think? Yeah, I mean, I know that let us say if this is the current, this current flows into the series of R and C to generate the required 0. So, I of S, yeah, 1 by SC2 is 0. So, which means what is 0? Minus 1 by R2C2. Okay. So, I mean, anytime you see a, a series RC, there uh, is a possibility for having a 0 most likely. Okay, uh, great. So then let me see if I ask this question. Oops, should remove this fellow. So I take a simple network like this R and C. Input and outputs are marked. So what is the transfer function? Does anyone remember? Yeah, I mean you can simply find it. It's 1 by SE by R plus 1 by SE. So this simplifies to fine one pole no zeros okay so now let us say I uh, basically modify this as this basically I am splitting that single cap into two series caps the output is still the same output is this this node voltage so now uh, well if you go by our uh, logic 
number of poles is the number of independent state variables right so here i can set this capacitor voltage i can also define this voltage independently without any contradiction no right i mean I, it doesn't matter on the phase it just says how many independent capacitor voltages i can initialize here i can actually initialize both of them no problems fine so it seems like number of poles is what 2 2 and do you think we have a zero here i mean uh, what is the way i told to find the zero forget about this network now okay i didn't show you this guy uh, but also the i mean that's a foolproof phase you short capacitors and find i can short any of these capacitors but will the output be zero no is that okay so how many zeros are there no uh, one because if you have if i have two zeros if i sh even if i short two capacitors simultaneously the output should have been non zero but here if i short both capacitors output is zero so there is only one zero seems to be i mean this seems to be the case if you follow our technique right so uh, but i know for a fact the transfer function has only one pole here i find that in addition to the one pole i have one pole and a one and one zero so what do you think happens ah huh, sorry that seems to be the only logical way right the additional pole should be cancelled by the additional zero make sense and that's in turn what happens actually if you uh, try to find the transfer function in an uncancelled form you will actually get something like this okay and end of uh, these two guys cancel okay and i mean this is basically i don't know if in controls you would have learned right unobservability have you guys heard this unob unobservable state okay mtx no heard of not heard of this term okay okay maybe in advanced course yes ah there are states called unobservable and uncontrollable states i mean here it's basically an unobservable state although the state is present you can't see it because you have a pole zero cancellation theoretically it exists but in practice it's not observable okay so this is what is called an unobservable state Okay, I mean this is just some extra thing to feed your brain, but I mean in practice it doesn't affect at all, right? In practice, you know this basically has just one pole. So, okay, uh, so then let's get on to uh, the transistor circuits. So in the last class we looked at the common drain. So today let's start with common source. So common source, I apply the input here. Say I have a current source. So finally, I'll have to replace this current source by a transistor. What transistor I'll have? PMOS. Okay. So I'll uh, draw the small signal for this quickly. For the NMOS, at the gate I have the input. I'll have the uh, control source and the output resistance for the NMOS. Source is ground. What will happen for the PMOS? You will just have the output resistance of that, and that will basically come in parallel to this. So I'll clump, I'll uh, you know lump both of them together into this single resistor. Okay. So I'll call this to be some R naught, uh, which is of both transistors. So. So now let's quickly mark the capacitors. For the NMOS, you will have a capacitor from uh, gate to source. You will have one from gate to drain. From uh, drain to the substrate or the body. Right? You will also have one from the source to the substrate. And that's it. For the PMOS, you see gate is incrementally short, source is short, and this is also connected like this. So what is the capacitor that will appear for the PMOS? You will only have from drain to the substrate, right? because all the other terminals are ground. 
so again that will come in parallel to this guide so i can basically lump both of them into one capacitor so now if you uh, look at it uh, this capacitor is connected between grounds so it doesn't affect us and uh, this guy is connected across a voltage source so again it doesn't play a role so i can remove this fellows okay so now if i simplify it i'll have something like this so uh, this is v in the gate is also at v in so what is the current source value gmv in so i'll call this some r not i'll call this some c not let's say this is some c now i'm interested in finding this transfer function so what are the three things i need to know to define this transfer function properly Ah, I need to find the poles number one, and zeros, and the DC gain. It was basically a naught times the zeros by the poles. So I need to know each of these three. So what is the DC gain? Do you think? DC gain is where I don't have the capacitors. Minus GM R naught. Okay. So DC gain is minus GM R naught. so uh, then let's try to find uh, the poles first again for the poles i'll assume that <coughs> the input is short so let me quickly read read uh, redraw that i'll have the input to be shorted i basically have this <coughs> fine now the input is grounded so what happens to the current source vanishes that vanishes like this thing so this goes goes off so now we just have one node with some r and c so what is the pole location minus 1.5 r r is c minus c yeah so uh, i'll just say it's minus g not by c plus c not okay same thing okay i'll just call it p1 not p not So now, do you think we have a zero here, or we don't have a zero here? Okay. Again, we'll do the same. We'll short this capacitor to ground. What happens to the output? Zero. But if I short this guy, so we do have a zero. Again, that should be clear because uh, I mean, do you think we have multiple paths from the input to the output? You can look carefully. Ah, I mean, basically, multiple currents flowing to the output. Ah, so like, like he's saying, you have a current through the capacitor. You also have this current, right? Because this also GM times V in. So these two currents, obviously, will be in different phase because one is a capacitor current. And again, to find the uh, zero location, I'll assume V naught of S is zero. Okay. So now, if I put KCL uh, at this output node, what do I get? i am applying ksl at the output node the output voltage is zero <coughs> what are the currents entering the node ha huh? sorry v in v in times sc minus gm v in okay all the other currents are zero is that fine So if I equate it to zero, what is the zero frequency? Okay, so this will be the zero frequency. Okay. So. Ah. Ah. Yeah, here at least it uh, it's trivial because there is uh, we don't have two independent states. Here is just one state. So if you have, a, I mean, 
this is just one state right you can't have two i can't define the two capacitor voltages independently it's just a one degree of freedom but in the example i showed i could actually set these two guys independently again this unobservable uncontrollability are i mean in practice we'll not be able to see the circuits it just gets cancelled finally is it okay so uh, this is with the common source so what now what i'll do is uh, take this flow so right now i assume that the uh, input is supplied directly like this okay so now uh, i'll assume that input given with some resistance rs okay because uh, i mean you'll find this calculation actually helps us to understand something later okay so uh, we'll do this calculation so that it will help us later in the course so let us see this rs that's the only change so now uh, what are the capacitors that i'll have to consider uh, this capacitor is it relevant or not relevant it's relevant so this guy is the only thing that i can, that i can ignore so let me quickly uh, redraw that <coughs> oops input i have rs i'll assume this capacitor is c1 and then i'll have this so this is r0 c0 so i'll call the gate voltage as some v1 so the current source is gm times v1 and say the output is v2 fine so again uh, we will try to uh, do the same thing what is the dc gain for dc gain i'll get rid of these guys the same okay i apply v in here the same thing appears here gm times v in goes and generates the output voltage so it is minus gm r okay so next let's uh, see how many poles we have so how many poles we have we have three capacitors but uh, what number of poles depends on what how many capacitor voltages i can set independently right how many i can set independently here if you think about it if i set these two capacitor voltages can i set this voltage no I, uh, the number of poles depends on the number of capacitor voltages i can initialize independently right so how many i can initialize is what i am trying to find right so i mean for example let's say i initialize these two voltages what will happen to this voltage that is basically the sum of other two capacitor voltages right is that okay similarly i mean i can take any one capacitor as something and say that voltage depends on the other two capacitor voltages so although i have three capacitors i can only set two independent i can only set two of the capacitor voltages independently okay so this will uh, this will always be the case if you have some capacitor loops like this okay only uh, i mean one voltage is basically some of the other oops went off yeah so so number of poles is basically two okay so let's find number of zeros how many zeros we have No, if we for I mean first let's see if we have one zero for one zero, 
I should short, I can, I should be able to short any of the capacitors and still get a non-zero output. So I can short this fellow. I can still get a non-zero output. So there is one zero. So if, if we have two zeros, I should be able to short two of them simultaneously. So let's say I short these two guys. What happens? Output is zero, right? Because I pull this node to ground, everything is zero. Same, we can argue the same with any other pairs of capacitors. So short these two, it's gone. Okay, and similarly, if I short this guy with this also, it's gone. So how many zeros I have? I have only one zeros, one zero. So let's try to find their locations. Let's start with the zero. That's because that's more easy. So again, the same thing. I mean, again, the zero here comes again because we have these two parts, right? Same thing as before. So to find the location of zero, I'll say that uh, V2 of S is zero at the zero frequency. And I'll apply KCL there. So what do I get? So at this node, I'm planning to apply KCL. These two currents are what? Huh? Zero. So basically, again, uh, these two currents will what will add up. So what do we get? I mean, what is the current in this direction? V1 SC. This current minus GM V1. Okay. That. Ah. Uh, that is equal to a current here which is zero. Fine. I mean because these two currents are zero. Is that okay? I am just applying KCL at this node, right? So sum of these two currents will be equal to sum of these two currents. I know the currents flowing in uh, these two branches is zero and that is what I am doing. So what is the zero frequency? M by C. It didn't change as before. Great. So now uh, let's try to find the pole locations. And unfortunately, now you see that you don't seem to have a single node with that R and a C. You seem to have a strong coupling between the input and the output nodes. So it is not trivial to actually uh, look and say. So what we'll do, we'll again uh, do full-blown calculation get the pole zero pole locations and try to make sense of the result and see how we can actually uh, yeah we'll try to see why the locations make sense finally okay so let me copy paste this okay oops what happened okay i'll draw it again quickly so i have uh, v in RS C1 then I have this guy C1, C1. and this is V1 this is V2 okay so same old calculations, we'll have to do use KCL. So if I apply KCL at uh, this node, what do I get? This one. What is it? Mean minus B1 by RS, I write as GS, okay? Plus, okay, okay, I'll probably write the other way. I'll say some of the currents leaving that node is zero. That's the most standard way. So it's V1 minus V in times GS plus SC1 plus times SC0. So let's do at the second node. What do I get? V2 minus V1 times SC plus GMV1 plus I'll just say G0 plus SC. Okay. So uh, yeah, I'll write it in a matrix form so that it's easy to manipulate. Say V1 and V2. 
so can you help me fill up the matrix now what is the first term gs sc1 sc fine and second term i just have minus sc okay second row first column what is it yeah okay i have gm minus sc okay i have uh, this guy right gm minus sc and what is the last thing g not plus sc sc not okay what are the constant terms the first first equation what is the constant gs times v in and the second one there is no constant okay great so this basically uh, two equations two unknowns should be able to solve it in your sleep also so which means you should be able to solve it now during the a time class but uh, i'm sure you're not sleepy so you don't solve it now let's i'll solve it you can help me solve i mean you can solve this in multiple ways so Uh, simpler ways to form this use is kramer's rule are you guys aware of this kramer's rule so what is the determinant delta kramer's rule everyone is familiar right okay okay so what is the delta this determinant so gs sc1 plus sc plus g0 times sc c0 plus a c times okay so let's expand it i'll expand in powers of s the constant term is what gs times g not that's the only constant term we'll have so next let's let me write the s square term because it's straight forward so s square will be the product of this and this and here you see that uh, this s square c square will cancel with this term right so we'll not have that c square term as we saw in the last class so what we'll have other product c c not plus you know c c1 c1 c not so let's write the s term so one will have gs times this thing so that is basically uh, gs times c plus c not i'll also have g not times this guy so g not times c plus c1 and i'll also have this term okay so i'm interested to find the output voltage which is v2 so what should i do If I have to solve using Kramer's rule, what should I do? Delta of the second term, right? I am interested in finding this fellow. Okay. And how do I do that? So I'll basically put the uh, this fellow in place of this row. So I'll write it here. So I'll have G S V in and zero. So what is the delta two? Minus GSB in GM minus SC. Okay. So then I'll take the uh, ratio of the two that will give me the uh, final yeah output. Oops, I think I made a mistake. Copy. So I'll do this. Okay, so this is the output V two of S. So if I want to find the transfer function, I will basically divide it by V in. So V in goes off, and this is the transfer function. Okay, simple manipulation. So this is the wheel. So let me write it in the standard form. I'll take the DC term out, and then write as one plus S by something, by one plus S by something. So the numerator I'll take GM out, so I'll have minus GM GS. Okay. The denominator I'll take all the constant terms out. 
so we'll have gsg not times 1 plus s into i'll have c plus c not uh, by g not c plus c1 by gs plus gm by uh, g not gs times c okay plus a square times cc not cc1 it's one more thing. okay so again this simplifies to gs cancels here so i get the dc gain as gm by g naught as expected i get a zero what what frequency same as what we qualitatively guessed and then i'll copy this guy i don't want to write it again and again I'll get this. Okay. So now to find the poles, I'll have to find the roots of uh, this big-looking equation. So let's see. I mean, sometimes algebra is painful, but uh, where engineers lie is how to how do you make sense of the result, right? We'll do calculations, but finally we'll try to understand how we can actually get it simply. So I'll have to find the roots of this guy. So again, one equation, two unknowns. What an equation? You guys know how to solve. But uh, instead of doing that, what we'll do is again, we are engineers. We are lazy people. We'll make quick approximations. So let us say I have uh, this. I mean, basically now the equation is something like this, right? A x square plus b x plus c. Okay. So now let us say this has two roots. I'll call it uh, p one and p two. So let us say for some reason one of the roots is much much larger than the other. Okay. Let's assume this. Okay. So now you know uh, what is the sum of the roots? Minus minus b by a. If I say that p two is much much larger than p one, what is this approximately equal to? P two. So this gives you directly one root. Okay, and what is the product of the roots? C by a. So which means what is P one? I mean I know what is P two. A minus C by b. Okay. Again, this we'll start. I mean again, uh, the thing is it's complicated, right? So we'll start with an approximation. We'll make this as an assumption. So with this assumption, looks like our solutions are straightforward. We'll calculate the solution, and then see if the assumptions are valid. If it is valid, well and good, we are set. And that's how we usually solve any complex problem, right? Make it into something simpler by making some assumption, and then see if the assumption is finally valid. Okay, and in this case, it turns out to be valid, as we'll see. So. Uh, Okay, so this is the deal, and here uh, in this equation, what is the value of c? C is one. Okay, so first pole is basically in this, it's minus one by b. So the first pole is minus one by this entire term. Okay, so I'll have minus one by the entire term. Uh, what I'll do is I'll take here gs in the numerator alone. Okay. So I write minus g s. So what I'll have in the denominator now? Hmm? Or okay, fine. Uh, tell me, I have g s g not. I mean, it's basically one by this term, right? Ah, so what is it? C plus c not times g s. G not. mc so here i'll just take the g not out and put it in the denominator okay for some reason okay so uh, this i'll simplify it like this minus gs by say take the i'll write in terms of each capacitor so what i get for c 1 plus 
जी एम बै जी नाट ओके इला प्लस वन सी वन अंड सी नाट टाइम एस बै जी ओके सो लेट मी रईट दि सेकेंड पोल आलो क्विकली कॉपी पेस्ट दिस Entire page I can copy maybe. Okay, so the second pole is basically minus b by a as we have found. So let me write that also quickly. Minus b by a is basically the ratio of these two fellows. So what I'll have, uh, I'll have G S G naught by this term C plus C naught times G S. Ah, C plus C naught times G S times G naught plus G M C times I'll have. Uh, Is correct. Ah, sorry. Yeah. Into the okay. I think I made the other way around, right? I think I messed up here. Yeah, this should have been inverse, right? Okay. Okay. So what I have. Uh, Minus G S by G naught by the capacitors C C naught plus C C one times we'll have G S times C plus C naught G naught times C plus C one plus G M C. Okay, so this cancels and then we have uh, these two guys cancel. So then I'll what I'll do is. Uh, I'll take C plus C one to the denominator here. Okay. Again, I am doing it for a reason, which will be uh, clear in some time. If I do that, I'll have minus G S times C plus C naught by C plus C one plus G naught C plus C one divided by. So here I can uh, basically take C naught common. That will give me C plus C one. That will basically cancel with this guy. Okay, it's just a manipulation. So I'll have uh, what? C C one by. Okay. These are the roots we got. Okay, so let's take a step back and see why this makes sense. And uh, before that, uh, this let me draw the circuit once. So this is the circuit. So I am going to slightly redraw it. So what I'll do is same thing. Instead of drawing this current source, I'll uh, represent this as a GM block like this. Okay. The same thing. This current source. Oops. Instead of drawing the current source, I am doing this. That's all. This is basically the current source. Okay. Fine. This is the same node V one. This is the node V two. At V two, I have this. Between V one and V two, I have this. Okay. Oops. So let me take this guy out uh, and use the other circuit. Okay, so here uh, let us say I didn't have this capacitor. Okay, so there is no C. So then you see that these two nodes are isolated. Okay. So now, uh, what do you think the pole locations are? Hmm? Minus one by R S times C. Which I write as minus G S by 
this is let me mark clearly okay and what will be the second pole minus g not by c not okay but now what we have done is uh, in the actual circuit we do have this additional capacitor c what happened to this oops this is rs c1 or not c0 and c and uh, with c let's see what the pole locations we got the first pole was uh, this big looking guy let me quickly copy paste and the second pole location is this okay right so now uh, let me just copy this once again so now let us say uh, let me take this guy out say you have a voltage amplifier with a gain of minus a it's basically a voltage control voltage source and then let us say you put a capacitor c in feedback okay so let us say i'm interested in finding the impedance looking from the input side hmm? so i'll apply a test voltage here so what will be the output voltage minus a times v test so what will be the uh, current that will be drawn into the this node okay i t is e t times sc okay so for all practical reasons it looks like looking into the input side i seem to have a capacitance of a plus 1 times c okay so if i call this as node 1 and node 2 it looks like at node 1 i seem to have a capacitor which is a plus 1 times the actual capacitor you had okay and uh, this is called the uh, miller effect wherein if you have any impedance put it in feedback across a voltage amplifier you will have this impedance transformation happening okay and uh, in our case if you think about it we have slightly similar case we have voltage controlled current source around which we have this capacitor and feedback it is not exactly the same right because in miller effect this guy needs to be a voltage controlled voltage source but here we have voltage controlled current source so what will happen is this let me draw that portion alone so we have put this capacitor in feedback like this okay i have r not let's see now if this were an voltage controlled voltage source it will fix if i know this voltage i can confidently say this voltage is minus a times vt but now it is a current source it doesn't fix this voltage okay so we can't apply this miller effect directly but it turns out at least at low frequencies what is the gain at low frequencies the capacitors are not active so then uh, can i say anything about the gain from here to here that time it's approximately minus gm or not okay so roughly speaking we can uh, put use miller effect here assuming that at low frequencies this is a gain okay and if you do that what is the capacitance looking in a plus 1 times c okay so in our amplifier we have uh, this right we had the let me short the input because input is not of relevance to us we have rs we had c1 and then we had a case like this right so this i can uh, approximate as i had rs and c1 as usual and looking in i know it's a capacitance of c times a plus 1 where a is 
yeah so this is c times 1 plus gm i will say gm by g0 okay same thing right and now you look seems like we have the gm and you have something here okay so now basically we have removed this uh, coupling between the input and the output okay so which means now i can confidently say the pole locations and what is the pole location do you think here this is c1 this is plus c times okay and if you look at the expression we got which i should have written somewhere yeah so i have minus gs i have c1 i have c into 1 plus gm by g0 the main terms of course i have some additional terms here they come about because first of all this pole location we got as an approximation and second of all miller effect we can't actually use here because it is a voltage control current source so do, those two guys uh, lead up to these extra terms but for practical purposes uh, the terms which i have highlighted in circle will what will dominate right because this capacitor c is multiplied by a gain which is going to be large and that is what will dominate the rest of the terms okay so hopefully this explains why the pole location is this so we'll stop and uh,